This morning, we want to continue our teaching of fruitfulness, God's plan for your life, God's grand design for man is that you be fruitful. God's grand plan for you is that you be fruitful. God created you to be fruitful. Can I hear an amen? amen. In Genesis chapter number 1, verse 28, it says, let us make man, from verse 20, I mean, uh, 27, it says, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the force of the sea, I mean over the fall of the air, the bed of the sea, and over everything that creepeth upon the surface of the earth. So in verse 27, it says, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said, be fruitful. So you are created to be fruitful. You are created to bear fruits. Amen. Amen. He didn't only create you to be fruitful, he ordained you for fruitfulness. Amen. In John 15 verse 16, he said, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And I have ordained you to bear fruit, and that your fruit will remain. So you are blessed, you are created to be fruitful, you are ordained to be fruitful, you are also blessed with a mandate of fruitfulness. He blessed them and mandated them, said, be fruitful and multiply. The counsel of God concerning your life will stand. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? But the interesting thing this morning that God will be showing us is that God's agenda for your life is not only limited to bearing fruits. He wants you to bear more fruits and increase to an extent where you bear much fruits. It's not limited to just bearing fruit. He wants you to bear much fruit. John 15 verse 1. John chapter number 15 verse 1. Are we there? It's Jesus speaking. He said, I am the true vine and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth fruit, that beareth no fruit, he taketh it away. That means he desires fruit in every branch. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purged it that he may bring forth more fruit. He says, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except you abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abided in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Somebody say much fruit. Much fruit. Say what I say much fruit. much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are born. So fruit bearing is productivity. God wants you to live a productive life. Fruit bearing is successful living. God wants you to live a life of success. Fruit bearing is advantageous living. God wants you to live a life full of advantage over every devil. Can I hear an amen? That is why nobody is created disadvantaged. You are advantaged. Can I hear an amen? amen. You need to enjoy advantage the remaining days of your life. Food bearing is being enriched. God wants you to be rich. He created you to be rich. I can't hear your amen. amen. I said God created you to be rich. Amen. I'm preaching to you this morning, not preaching to the pews or the chairs. So I think I need a feedback from you. Can I hear an amen? amen? God wants you to be rich. He wants you to bring forth fruit. He wants your life to be a praise. The Bible says, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him that has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He created you to have a marvelous life. Amen. Not a stressful life, a marvelous life. You are supposed to bear fruit in the order of Joseph. Can I hear an amen? Yeah. You are supposed to bear fruit in the order of Joseph's kind of fruitfulness. 
Joseph was a fruitful brow. He was a fruitful bow. The Bible called it a fruitful plant. Look at Genesis 49, verse 22. This is the order of fruitfulness that God wants for you. Genesis 49, verse 22. It says, Joseph is a fruitful bow, even a fruitful bow by a well, whose branches run over the wall. That means nothing can limit him. His branches run over the wall. His fruitfulness extends beyond barriers. He's unlimited. He has advantage in every situation. He was advantageous. He was rich in every circumstance he found himself. He says, the, the archers have surely grieved him and shot at him. They hated him. But his bow abode his strength. They couldn't stop him. They tried, but they can't. The arms of his hands were made strong by what? By the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. He said, from this is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Even by the God of thy father, who shall help thee, and by the Almighty, who will bless thee with the blessings of heaven above and the blessings of the, of the earth beneath. Can I hear an amen? Multiple blessings. That is the order of the blessings of Joseph. The blessings of heaven above, the blessings of the deep that lieth under, the blessings of the breast and of the womb. The blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of your forefathers unto the utmost bound of everlasting hills. He said, They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brethren. May all these blessings abide on your own head. May all these blessings rest upon you in the name of Jesus. Amen. That is the level of fruitfulness that God expects of you. Listen to me. They threw Joseph into the pit and they knew that he had a covenant of fruitfulness upon his life. So they became scared. You can imagine throwing somebody in a pit in the Middle East. They know he can meet all there. Amen. So that scared them that there is a mandate. They sold him to slavery. In Potiphar's house, he was fruitful. He became the head of Potiphar's house. In prison, they cast him into 